what's up guys the new tcg man list is coming up really soon it should be in a few weeks so pretty much i think two weeks um yeah so that gives us the opportunity to speculate before i start this is not a wish list uh, these are just my thoughts on the possible upcoming ban list in july uh, it's perfectly fine if you have another opinion so please don't be that guy um, yeah, okay, let's start. This format was really short, and yet it feels like a century to me. Uh, yet there's uh, a lot of variety, uh, a lot of decks that are topping. Uh, some people say it's a good thing, uh, some people say it's a bad thing, because a side deck can only count 15 cards, and yeah, you, you obviously cannot side against every deck. Uh, first of all, the banned cards. So my number one pick for this format is, of course, Soul Charge. Some people say uh, limiting, yeah, limiting it to one is fine. And I think that's more likely uh, how Konami is going to do it. And yeah, not straight out ban the card. Although, Soul Charge is one of the most powerful cards we have in the game right now. Of course, banned cards not included. Uh, it's a card that, when activated by a player, can give you an insane high amount of advantage. Even with, yeah, even with uh, its hefty life point cost. If I lose half my life, like pay, uh, for example, 3 or 4 thousand life points, but if I can establish a solid field, it's well worth the cost. And that's not fair. One card that can completely change the duel and at the same time give the player so much advantage. Next, we have a card that has been on my ban list for a long time now. Uh, yeah, no, not because I'm butthurt by the deck, because some, yeah, sometimes people say that, I read that in the comment section of the ban list videos. But uh, Roll Tribute is also a card that can win the duel in an instant. Uh, yeah, for example, you as a Gravekeeper player uh, opens up the game, like for example, activates Negro Valley, uh, sets a Spy or the Recruiter, the two or three back row, and boom, Roll Tribute your opponent. Um, yeah, most of the time, uh, it's, it's pretty much game over right there. Uh, if not, the Gravekeeper player has a lot of information of your whole hand. And again, that's not fair. Um, will they touch Royal Tribute? No, probably not. Okay, next we have the cards that could go to 1. Um, first pick, Girgia Gear. Yeah, pretty much a rescue rabbit for Girgia. Do I need to say more? Uh, the card should have been limited on the last list as well, but Konami skipped it. Now it's much more likely that Girgia will take some kind of hit. The deck did much more during this short format than it did last format. Uh, Girgia Gear seems like yeah, and should be the perfect candidate to take a well-deserved hit. Then we have Artifact Moral Tech. Um, yeah, it's just released, although yeah, together with Sanctum and sometimes Ignition and Beagle Tech, uh, yeah, splashed into decks. Uh, Head, for example, so Hands, uh, Artifacts and Trap Tricks, now one of the best decks in the format. Moral Tech has had a huge impact on the metagame. Uh, more and more people are choosing to drop MST from the main deck, for example, due to the risk of hitting either yeah, Moral Tech or Sanctum. If, if we are hitting Sanctum, then we are hitting Artifact as a whole archetype, and that's a bit too early, I think. So Moral Tech to 1 seems like a well-deserved hit. Um, the last card that I would hit to 1 is Judgment Dragon. Um, Will this happen? No, probably not. We are getting a new structure deck fully based on Light Swarms very soon, so why would they hurt the sales and hit Judgment Dragon in any kind of form? Uh, although, that does not uh, make Judgment Dragon a balanced card, far from it. Nuking the whole field, followed up by more Dragon Rulers, for example, uh, or more JDs and the deck for game. Um, or yeah, if you stop the first one with uh, Warning, for example, there is still a chance of, him, oh yeah, of them having the second one or the third one in hand to just nuke your whole field. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Then, the cards uh, I could see going to two. Uh, Fire and Ice Hand. Uh, immediately upon the release, uh, these cards were splashed into different decks, either yeah, as a main deck option, like for example, Hat, or just in a side deck, in yeah, Evil Swarms, Dragons, and so on. Uh, both Fire and Ice Ant uh, also had a huge impact on the format ever since they were released. Uh, now you have to play very cautiously when your opponent sets a monster. It could always uh, be a hand, for example, be yeah, because before this uh, the options were very limited. For example, Girgia Armor or uh, Abyss Linde, uh, for example. Uh, due to the fact that the hands are being splashed into a lot of different decks and from past experience with Konami, it's, it's very likely both hands will get the Reborn Tengu treatment, so both hands to two. Although, uh, currently the hands can still be very much live when uh, both are played in twos, 
Uh, and you see uh, people uh, only citing two eyes and fire hands now. So, uh, will this kind of restriction have any effect? Um, I yeah, to some extent yes. But unlike the fact that Reborn Tengu completely disappeared after it was put to two, uh, the hands will still be played uh, very highly. I think. Uh, then again, immediately put both hands at one seems kind of pointless to me. Next, we have course. Um, once, yeah, people screamed for this card uh, being banned, and now it yeah, pretty much has fallen off the radar. Some decks still play it, Monarchs, Light Swords on the top of my head. Uh, compared to the OCG, where the current, yeah, the current format is a joke, uh, really the ban list over there is, is a serious mess. But back on topic, uh, Gors is currently at 3 in the OCG, but yeah, little no impact on the game. Um, then, yeah, then again, will cores be put back to 2 here in the TCG? No, probably not. Then we have Fire Formation Tanky. Uh, put back to 3 last time because Konami planned to release their special pack with uh, Super Tankies. Uh, again, not wanting to hurt sales, of course. Tanky to 2 slightly hurts a lot of decks, uh, Bujins, Fire Fist, and so on. Uh, Bujins, for example, I think don't deserve a hit. Uh, maybe Crane? Um, I would, yeah, I wouldn't really touch Yamato. That would hurt the deck too much. And if Konami wants to hit the the bear engine, Fire Fist, and Bujins, I think hitting Tanky seems like a more appropriate move. Then we have Book of Moon. This card returns on the list uh, every time. Book of Moon is a very skillful card, and uh, you can interrupt your opponent's plays. Very versatile, but at the cost, uh, yeah, but, but it does have a cost because Book of Moon is essentially a minus one. But uh, very well worth a spot in the main deck. It also bypasses Wiretap, uh, which is also one of the cards of this format, looking at the Wiretap Wars, for example, where uh, I negate my opponent's Wiretap with my own Wiretap, and he negates my own Wiretap with his Wiretap. Uh, yeah, you know the, 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 yeah, the Solemn Judgment Wars in the, all, uh, in the old days. Then we have Mermails. Um, yeah... The, yeah, Mermails as an archetype as a deck lost a lot of popularity. Uh, I don't think the deck is going to be touched for the upcoming list. Um, if you really want to hit the deck, I think both uh, Abysteus um, and Sphere, Abysphere, are likely candidates to take a small hit. Uh, then again, highly unlikely, I think. Then the last card I will put it to is uh, Reckless Greed. Also a card that keeps returning on my list uh, due to the hoboning trend of adding Reckless Greed, Upstart Goblin and sometimes also Card Card to every deck, uh, even yeah, when the deck really doesn't need it, is one of the reasons. But the most important one is that at this moment we have a lot of draw power in the game. And because of this you can easily draw into multiple copies of Reckless Greed. And this means that you can bypass its restriction of skipping your next draw phases. Uh, if you activate multiples at the same time, so it's very beneficial. And activating three Reckless Greed at the same time is just, yes, yeah, straight out uh, ridiculous. Then, uh, cards going back to three. Um, honestly, I, I don't really know. Yeah, we might have a few cards that could come back to three. Magician of Fate, for example. But other than that, no, not really, I think. Um, yeah, to conclude the list, a few honorable mentions. Uh, a card that's highly anticipated uh, of its return. Elemental Hero Stratos. People are saying it's probably going to return to the TCG due to the release of the new Hero Structure deck. But I highly, highly doubt Stratos will return. Last, Solemn Warning. Uh, Solemn Warning is a very powerful trap that immediately puts the player who draws it in a very good position in the duel. Uh, especially when you start the duel and uh, make your setup with, uh, like, uh, for example, Yamato or Girgia armor and protect it with Solemn Warning. Um, I can definitely see a ban on Warning, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, although it's, it's likely not going to happen. Um, yeah, that's that. Guys, again, uh, these are just my thoughts on the possible upcoming uh, ban list in July. It's perfectly fine if you have another opinion, and of course, feel free to, yeah, to share your opinions or list in the comment section. Uh, we can expect our TCG list in about two weeks. Um, next up is the European Championship in Amsterdam, upcoming weekend. I'll be there for uh, coverage, of course. Uh, so good luck to everyone who's attending Euros. Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching, and feel free to leave a comment or a like if you enjoyed the video. Leak them signing out. Peace.